Yeah, I'm here with Jim Miles with Merck Animal Health, and Jim works in the feed yard sector, and uh, we're here at the, the Cattle Feeders Summit that Merck Animal Health sponsors, and always a, a, a nice annual event to bring a lot of the cattle feeders together and kind of catch up on, on what's happening in the industry. And I wonder if you could just give us a, a real quick uh, outline of what we're doing here with the, with the Cattle Feeders Summit. Yeah, John, uh, this is our 10th year of the Cattle Feeders Business Summit, so uh, what we try to do is we try to position it to where we actually um, talk about more industry issues instead of Merck Animal Health products, and so we spend a lot of time talking about the markets, we talk about environmental impact, we talk about employees. Um, this session we actually even had uh, Caterpillar come in and talk about uh, management solutions for rolling equipment at the feed yards. There's plenty to talk about these days with uh, all the different issues facing the industry and the drought and markets and so on. Uh, one product area that we talked about that I thought was really interesting is that, uh, and that we've been hearing about out in the field, is that there could be a, a shortage of some of the implant products for feed yards. And I wonder if you just kind of give us a summary of what's, uh, what's happening there. Yeah, John. Um, basically, a little over a year ago, um, one of the manufacturers of implants, uh, actually the active ingredient for implants, um, basically uh, received a what's called a 43 letter from the FDA where they had to shut down uh, imports of TBA to the USA. Um, it did not affect Merck Animal Health. It affected two other companies in the marketplace, but we've had to basically step up our production to fill in the needs for these other companies. And I understand the the product line is um, is a little more limited temporarily, and and wonder if you just talk about some of the protocols that uh, the feed yards probably should be using to make sure that they they get the best use of of the products that are available from Merck Animal Health. Yes, John. One of the things that that happened with this is when all the the uh, basically when we were required to supply the the total industry, we knew we couldn't do it with our production capacity even with the overtime and so what we had to do is we had to reduce our offering and one of the things that made that happen was Revel RXS since Revel RXS basically takes the place of two cartridges um, it only meant we had to run a cartridge through the machine at once and that was one of our limiting factors of how many cartridges we can run through the machine in a set period of time so RevX really worked out well for us there so how that changed our protocol is we basically decided not to manufacture some certain products. So the fa the only thing we're manufacturing this time is Revel RXS, and that's going to be for steers 130 days up to about 240 days. And then we have Revel R200, which is for steers or heifers, and it, we're recommending that people that are feeding 130 day and less cattle, either steers or heifers, use that. And then Revlar IH, which is an initial implant for heifers, and then they can follow that for a terminal implant with Revlar 200. You know, implants don't only provide an economic benefit to the um, producer, but they also have a great ec economic impact on the environment, or I should say a positive impact on the environment. Um, we produce more beef with less resources, and that's very important when it comes to uh, protecting the environment.